All right. So now what we're going to do is um, remember that we tried, we defined the group law of, of an elliptic curve geometrically. We're going to give another definition algebraically, which is going to help me. For example, I never proved that the law was associative. In this new way, I'm going to prove uh, a much easier way to prove that the, the law is actually a group law um, of, or that it gives me an abelian group. So first, let's start with a, a small lemma here. Uh, this is lemma 3.3 in the book. So uh, let's see the curve of genus 1. And let P and Q be points on the curve. Then it turns out that um, the divisor that is only supported at P is uh, is equivalent to the divisor only supported at Q, even only if P is actually Q. Okay, remember that, um, so let, let's just go directly to the proof and I'll remind you that P is equivalent to Q as divisors, um, even only if there is a function in the function field of, of C such that the difference of divisors is principal so that the divisor of this function is the difference of the two divisors. Okay. Um, but then what this implies is that if you look at that divisor, is there is a pole at Q and a zero at Q at T, but the pole at Q tells me that then F is in the L space of the divisor Q. Remember the L space is the functions that have a pole of at most, at most order one at Q. Okay. And um, Riemann Rock said that the dimension, because if we are in genus one, it turns out the dimension of that space equal the degree of the divisor. So the dimension was one. But guess what? This function that have a pole of at most order one at Q, constant functions satisfy that because the constant functions have a pole of at most order one and they don't have a pole. So they have a pole of at most order one at Q. So um, the constant functions are containing the L space, which is one dimensional, uh, and therefore this is an equality. Okay, so uh, then that would tell me that F is in fact a constant function. It's not a function, it's just a constant. Uh, the divisor of a constant function, there is no zeros or poles. So the divisor is actually just zero. And uh, that tells me then that uh, P minus Q is the zero divisor in which case uh, P is exactly Q, not just equivalent, but exactly Q. And that means uh, that P equals Q. Okay, this is going to be useful. Oh, by the way, this proves, um, well, this proves the interesting uh, direction of the, of the theorem. The other one is immediate. So the, the right to left, if P equals Q, then yes. Uh, the divisor P is equivalent to divisor Q. Okay, then, um, then we're ready to prove um, what we are actually uh, very interested in, which is the following. Um, here. Nope. So this is now proposition 3.4 which is the key to uh, using the Picard group for the elliptic curve group law. So let E with a point O 
of the analytic curve. Uh, then, uh, first of all, A, for all divisors of degree zero on E, um, there is a unique point on E such that the divisor is equivalent to P minus O. Okay. And um, because of that, I'm going to define a map uh, sigma from divisors of degree zero to E that give me uh, divisor maps to P. Okay, and what I want is for that map to actually be um, uh, a bijection because I do have a group law on divisors of degree zero. And if I have a bijection, then I can throw the group law to the other side and just use the group law from the left side. Um, but we're actually going to later prove that the group that the structure we defined on E already, it actually matches the group that you get. So you actually get an isomorphism of a billion groups. Uh, part B is we're going to show that sigma is surjective. That's going to be easy. C, uh, if D1 and D2 are divisors of degree zero, then uh, sigma of D1 equals sigma of D2, if and only if D1 and D2 are equivalent. Or in other words, Uh, the map sigma induces an, uh, a bijection from Picard, which remember was divisors of degree zero mod principal divisors uh, to E. Oh, that, that is a misleading symbol. Let's um, it's just write a bijection of sets. Um, D, we're going to prove uh, that it has an inverse. Uh, D is mostly just a definition. Kappa, the inverse I'm going to call kappa, is an inverse of sets, again, uh, that sends P to kappa of P is going to be the class of P minus O in the Picard group. And finally, um, uh, the golden ticket here is that the group law, the geometric group law on E, which we just defined, coincides with the uh, algebraic, let's say, uh, group law on uh, Picard. Algebraic in the sense that it's just algebra, it's just um, abstract algebra. Of course, the, the geometric group law, you can also say it's an algebraic group law because it's just uh, algebraic equations. Okay, so let's, um, let's prove this uh, here. Let me fix this. Hmm, that's not a good sign. So here's the proof. Um, so let D is going to be uh, a divisor on E. And uh, recall that Riemann rock, uh, because E is a, uh, an elliptic curve, so it's genus one, uh, the dimension 
of the LD space will be the degree of D as long as uh, if the if degree of D is bigger than zero. Okay. So um, for part A, um, our task is to show, remember that it says that um, the statement says that for all D, uh, there is a unique P, D as above in divisors of degree zero, such that uh, D is equivalent to P minus O. So we have to find that point P somehow. And I love this because this is the kind of thing that Riemann Rock allows you to do is uh, find that point P. So uh, let's start with looking at the dimension of the L space of D plus O. What is the dimension of that space? This is dimension as a K bar vector space. Um, the dimension of that will coincide with the degree of this divisor. The degree of D is zero and the degree is additive. And the, the degree of the divisor just supported on O is one. So the degree is one. Okay, so this is just uh, the degree of D plus O, which is one. Okay. Um, now, if um, we, we're going to, let, let's assume that D is not the zero divisor for now. Um, if D was uh, the zero divisor, then um, we can just take, um, oh, so yeah, so if D is zero, note, If D is zero, then pick P to be O, right? If D is zero, if P is O, then O minus O is the zero divisor and the zero divisor and the zero divisor are, are uh, equivalent. So that works. So let's take D to be non-zero. Um, then what happens is that we don't have the same trick as before that because this is one dimensional, then the constants are there. That is not true anymore because if D is non-zero, then what this is telling you is that there's gonna be, if D is non-zero in its de degree zero, there's gonna be some poles and some zeros. And the zeros there are telling you the function has zeros and the function has poles, right? So there is a one dimensional space, but it is probably not just constants. So uh, let, Regardless, let F be a generator of this L space. It's one dimensional, so there is one generator. Um, and then, since uh, the divisor of F, by definition of the L space, is bigger or equal to minus D minus O, okay? Um, which, by the way, now this has degree minus one. And the degree of the divisor of F is zero. Okay, um, then what happens? Um, then the, now this divisor, divisor of F minus, minus D minus O, bring it everything to the other side. Now this is effective. And now the combined degree because the, the, this is degree zero, this is degree one now, because of I, I or this part is degree one. So 
So the combined degree here is degree one. It is effective. So it meaning that the coefficients of every, in front of every point uh, that it's supported on are positive, but is degree one effective? So it has to be supported in a single point. So uh, the divisor of F minus minus D minus O has to be exactly one point P. Okay. So there's going to be one point that it's uh, literally supported on uh, that whole thing on the left. Uh, so, so yeah, so there is a point P on E such that the divisor of F is precisely minus D, uh, sorry, minus D, um, minus O plus P. And uh, therefore, by the uh, equivalence of divisors modulo principal divisors, D is equivalent to P minus O. Okay. Um, that is uh, the P we were looking for. The proposition actually says that there is a unique such P. So, uh, so let's take care of uniqueness. Uh, suppose there is another P prime with the same property that uh, P prime minus O is uh, equivalent to D and D is equivalent to P minus O, then um, that it also implies that uh, P is equivalent to D plus O is equivalent to P prime, um, which tells me then that P is equivalent to P prime. Huh, but we had a lemma about this. Remember, lemma 3.3 uh, tells me that if two points are equivalent, they have to be the same point. So if the if two divisors supported in one point are equivalent, they have to be exactly the same point. So uh, now lemma um, by lemma 3.3 that says that P has to be P prime. So there is a unique for every divisor, there is a unique P such that, so what we've proved is that um, for any divisor D, there is a unique prime such that um, uh, such that D is equivalent to P minus O. Okay. And that allows me then to define sigma. Then that allows me to define sigma such that for D, it gives me exactly one point P on E. Okay, great. So now uh, B is just says that Sigma is surjective. But guess what? Um, by definition, um, if I pick, if I, well, I, I need, now fixing a point on E, I need some divisor that maps to E, uh, but then take D to be uh, P minus O, then trivially uh, P minus O is equivalent to P minus O, right? But there is a unique P such that D is equivalent to P minus O, so this tells me that sigma of D needs to be P. So sigma of P minus O always maps to P. Okay, and that gives me uh, this objectivity that I needed. Uh, now we'll need injectivity. How about injective? Uh, let 
Um, so we, this is not a still a, a, a group homomorphism. So it's not like I can compute the kernel of the map or something. I really need to prove the old fashioned injectivity. So uh, let uh, PI be uh, sigma of DI for I one and two. So I have two divisors that are going to map um, to the same place. Okay, and suppose sigma of d1 equals sigma of d2. Um, um, so what that means is that um, um, yeah, so so pi are the unique uh, points such that di is let's just write it out d1 is equivalent to p1 minus o and d2 is equivalent to p2 minus o right and uh now what i have is that sigma d1 equals sigma of d2 um So um, if then P1 equal, well, I, I did assume that sigma of D1 equals sigma of D2, uh, which implies uh, that P1 um, equals P2. Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm looking for an even only F, so I'm not going to suppose this yet. Okay, I don't know why I can't remove this thing sometimes. Okay, so let's, let's prove an even only F. So first of all, if P1 equals P2, because uh, the images of the sigma d1 and d2 coincide, then uh, d1, which is uh, p1 minus o, this would be the same that p2 minus o, and that would be uh, like d2, and then that implies that d1 and d2 are equivalent. On the contrary, if d1 and d2 are equivalent, uh, then that implies that uh, p1 minus o is equivalent to p2 minus o. And if you rework this, this tells you that p1 is equivalent to p2 because I can cancel the o's in both sides. And again, by the lemma, uh, p1 equals p2. So uh, this tells me that um, the sigmas are equi so sigma of d1 equals sigma of d2 if and only if uh, p1 equals p2. Okay, so that gives me injectivity, and it gives me surjectivity. So uh, we have a bijection of sets. Okay and that so part d is then clear and the inverse uh, is called kappa from e to picard of e and it sends p to the class of p minus o so now comes the last part which is the fun part which is we want to prove that um, that divisors on E under addition is isomorphic to E under uh, the geometric construction of a group law that we uh, defined. Okay, so um, it suffices. Let me just do this in the next page.
So we want to prove again that uh, divisors on E under addition, which is just super easy to add divisors, that they just as isomorphic to E under geometric addition. Okay, then uh, it suffices to show that kappa is a group homomorphism. So that kappa of uh, P plus Q on E, which I'm gonna call uh, the geometric addition, is uh, the same that kappa of P plus, this is uh, the addition in Picard, kappa of P plus kappa of Q. So let's do that. So here's the proof of that fact. Um, so we are actually going to, we have to come up with the, the divisors and check that something is happening with the divisors to, to verify this. So let uh, L be, remember the line that goes through P, Q and, uh, and a point R. So uh, let this is f of x, y, z is some alpha x plus beta y plus uh, gamma z equals zero. It is the line through um, uh, through p, q, and the point R. Okay. Um, and similarly, let L prime now be uh, F prime of X, Y, Z is going to be the line through R and O. Alpha prime X plus beta prime Y plus gamma prime Z equals zero is the line through R and O. And L double prime is the line z equals zero, which remember we are working over a via stress form. It has a triple zero at O. Intersects uh, at O with a triple zero. So then what happens with the divisor of the function f over z? The function f has precisely three points where it vanishes at uh, on the elliptic curve is by definition of the line L is vanishing at P, at Q, and R. And uh, the Z has a triple vanishing at zero. So uh, this divisor is uh, P plus Q plus R minus 3O. What is the divisor of f prime over z? Same deal. Uh, now we have, uh, what are the points? Well, there is R, there is O. What is the third point of intersection with the curve? It also goes through P plus Q. That's the point of the L prime line, right? Um, I don't know if it helps, maybe I'll... Remember uh, that we have uh, this and we have the line through <clears throat> um, P, Q, R, and then we have that's the line L. This is the line L prime. Uh, it goes through O, R, and P plus Q, right? So uh, the divisor with F prime is this and the point P plus Q as divisor, okay, um, minus Z again has a triple point at O, okay? And um, then I can, and again, I can simplify this. I have two, uh, I have O in two places. So this is R uh, plus P plus Q minus two O, okay? Then, Look what happens. Um, then, if you uh, 
uh, subtract, which the difference of divisors as the divisors of the quotient of the functions. Uh, so take a, the difference of the two, I get, if you simplify here, I get P plus Q uh, minus P minus Q plus O equals the divisor of F prime over F, which is, of course, equivalent to zero because it is a principal divisor. What does this tell me? This tells me that I can uh, rewrite this as, let's add and subtract a few O's here, that this uh, minus P minus O uh, minus Q minus O uh, is uh, equivalent to the zero divisor. And uh, what does this mean? This means that kappa of P plus Q, which is uh, this, minus kappa of P minus kappa of Q is identically zero, right? Because um, once I use kappa, uh, if I'm talking about it in terms of kappa, that is in Picard, so I'm in the quotient or by zero divisor, so if it's equivalent to zero in the Picard is zero. And that is what I wanted to prove that um, that kappa, so this implies then that um, kappa of P plus Q, um, which P plus Q here is the geometric addition of points equals uh, kappa of P plus kappa of Q, where this addition is happening in Picard. So this is precisely what we needed. And this proves uh, the proposition and it proves that you can write um, that you can exchanging exchange the way you think about the uh, group structure on the elliptic curve between the geometric construction, which is pretty nice, uh, but hard to add points or think about it as a group of divisors. And then the addition is super easy. You add divisors just as a, as a free abelian group. So there is, it doesn't get any easier than that to add. Um, definitely is a, a group. Um, so you automatically get, so because the additions are the same, you automatically get that, um, that if you're going to just define group this way, you can transfer the associativity from the divisors to your elliptic curve and show that this is going to be an associative group also. So, uh, I mean, meaning a group law. All right. So, um, I think I only have three minutes. What else do I have here to do? Uh, so, sorry, could I ask a quick yeah. question? Sorry to take your last couple minutes. No, um, I, I, go ahead. So from the, the third to last line, so the line that starts with hence and then a result on the, the Picard group. Yeah. Can you help me understand the implication from that line to the, the line below it? I added and subtracted O's. Um, so, um, so I added and subtracted a no. So here, basically what I did is subtract a no and add a no. Okay. Okay. I see. And that. then I put, I combine this O with this O mm -hmm. and this O with this O uh, to get three pairs of point minus O, point minus O, point minus O. Yeah. Okay. And this already had an O to spare. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why you can sort of like now regroup them like that. So they look as the images of Kappa. Okay. Awesome. I get you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you for asking. Okay, so yeah, I think this is a good place to stop. I'm going to um, stop here and then next time I will talk about isogenies, um, which is a new section. So um, until next time.